My name is Jorge Zafrilla. I'm coming from the University of Castilla-La Mancha, and I'm going to present a joint paper uh, developed in collaboration with some of my colleagues from the University of Castilla-La Mancha, and one person from CMAT is a research center located in, in Madrid. Uh, the title of the presentation is Carbon Footprint of the Nuclear Energy Using Input-Output Life Cycle Assessment. The outline of my presentation is a typical one with an introduction, some ideas about data, methodology, and the scenarios that we are going to, to develop, some main results, because we have too many results, maybe, and the main conclusions. conclusions. About uh, introduction, Energy Roadmap for 2050 establishes an 80 to 95 percent of reduction uh, of the carbon dioxide emissions in the European Union. One of the main targets of this policy, of these objectives, is to turn the electricity sector into a quasi-zero emission sector. Obviously, this is an ambitious uh, policy and an ambitious goal for the future. But at this point, we can think about that nuclear power could play an important role in the fulfillment of these kind of commitments for the future. So at this point, we can make a question on how clean is the nuclear power from an LCA, life cycle assessment perspective. The main objective of the paper is to develop a multi-regional input-output life cycle assessment model of a nuclear power plant in Spain under different scenarios. About the main contributions of our paper, we, we want to highlight three different main contributions. The first one is that the data set and the methodology will allow us to estimate the variability and to capture all the uncertainties of the analysis via multiple scenarios. Uh, these scenarios are going to be methodological, technical, political, financial, and so many differences that we are going to present in the proper slide. The second main contribution of our paper is that the use of a multi-regional input-output life cycle assessment uh, to face the problems related to the emissions linked to the uh, production processes of imported goods is, is, is accurate and is, is very interesting for this kind of, of problems. And this is very special for the Spanish case because the case of nuclear power in Spain uh, is, is quite different to the rest of the world, for instance, France, because we don't have a covering industry behind this uh, nuclear power. We have to import all the inputs that we need to provide the nuclear facilities to produce uh, electricity. And uh, this is a consequence of the nuclear moratorium uh, during the 80s in, in Spain. And it has been a dismantling of the industry, of the covering industry supplying inputs. And the third contribution is that we think, at this at the moment, <laughs> up to now, that this is the first study of nuclear power carbon footprint in, in Spain. About data, uh, we are going to, to develop a multi-regional model based on the World Input Output Database. Data uh, is, a, is a worldwide uh, database. Uh, developed with, in, uh, within the framework of a seven framework program in the European Union, and is going to provide us many information about uh, different input output tables for almost 40 different countries. And the technical data is going to be provided by the Spanish Nuclear Industry Forum. Uh, we are going to use a report published in 2008, and this is a very interesting report for us, as we will see in the next slides. Uh, and we are going to establish a differentiation between, uh, uh, for the life cycle phases between construction and investment of the nuclear facility, the nuclear fuel cycle, and operation and maintenance. We don't have data about the dismantling process, so maybe we are underestimating the, the total emissions of the, of the, uh, in the carbon footprint analysis that we are going to develop, but I think it's, not, I think it's enough for, for Spain now <laughs> with this information. And table one, table two I go on, are going to, to show the information that we are going to use to develop and to build our vectors of final demand. The, the main advantages of this kind of information that is that we are going to have information disaggregated by sectors. Uh, and, and the most in, the, the total amount of investment cost is not important for us because we need a, an accurate the disaggregation by, by sectors. And this report from, from the nuclear forum industry, uh, nuclear 
for industry, yes, uh, it's, it's very interesting because of, because of that. This is going to be the information that we had to use for the construction or investment functions. And in table two, we are going to, to use this information to estimate how well our fuel cycle and operation and maintenance uh, final demand vectors. As you can see, this information is provided in euros per megawatt hour produced, so we need to make some assumption at this point. And our baseline scenario is going to be for a lifetime of 60 years. More or less, we are going to assume that our facility is going to produce more than 460,000 gigawatts hours in the 60 years. It's more or less a 4% of the electricity demand per year in Spain now, obviously. And the low factor assumption is going to be the 81.54%. It's more or less the same load factor of the Cofrentes nuclear power plant in the last 25 years. And the discount rate is going to be taken from RESCA, the report reference. This information, this technical information provided by RESCA report are going to, to allow us to build this uh, interest in and build this uh, final vector demands for the nuclear uh, construction and investment function and operation and maintenance, including the fuel cycle phase uh, vectors. It is very interesting. Obviously, if we are going to use a multi-regional model, it would be interesting to decompose or disaggregate this information from imports between uh, the countries that are going to be involved in this, in this trade. Uh, hopefully, uh, fortunately, uh, we are going to use an information provided by the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency about uh, a step-by-step -step nuclear fuel cycle uh, production process around the world, and we are going to have detailed information in which country are going to be uh, produced each phase of the nuclear power. And for the rest of the uh, vectors and the, for the rest of the phases, we are going to use the information provided by the World Input Output Database. So we are, we are going to, to decompose or to, to disaggregate this final uh, imported vector into seven different regions uh, that is going to, to allow us to, to have very, to get very interesting, very interesting reasons about these multi-regional effects. The regions are going to be Spain, rest of the European Union, NAFTA, China, East Asia, Riyadh, it's Brazil, Brazil uh, Russia, Indonesia, uh, Australia, uh, Turkey, and the last one, and India. India is a very important country, <laughs> and the rest of the world. Uh, about the methodology, we are going to develop a typical multi regional input output model using the, uh, the inverse matrix of Leontief, the, the novelty or, or the, um, the advantage of the use of a world input output database and a multi regional model that we, that is that we are going to have a very big matrix uh, with many, with a lot of information by country um, and a lot of information of the trade relationships and inter in intermediate goods and final goods between those, those regions. About the um, uh, environmental uh, environmental emissions coefficients, we are going to use also the, world, the environmental information from the World Input Output database, database for each country. And as a novelty, we are going to develop a hybrid input-output lifecycle assessment model using some information from the process LCA uh, data sets. Uh, in this case, we are going to use information from ECO inbent, inbent data for some of the main important sectors like mining and quarrying and coke refined petroleum and nuclear fuel in the process of production of the fuel, nuclear fuel cycle. Well, we think that this is uh, very interesting because uh, we can solve the, the problem with the aggregation. If we use this kind of uh, specific uh, coefficients, we can control the, exactly the, uh, the emissions related to the process to extract, for instance, or to, yes, to extract, for instance, uh, the uranium from the mines, obviously. Okay, we will see the, the equations now. Uh, we are going to, to develop three different models. The first one is going to be a single region model where we are going to assume that all the imports are going to be 
should be produced into Spain without considering the technologies, uh, the, the, the foreign technologies. The second model is going to be the multi-regional input-output model. We are going to use the wired information, but we are not going to include this novelty using a hybrid model. And the last one is going to be our reference model. It's going to be the hybrid multi-regional input-output model. And in this case, we are going to, to use this equipment and wired emission coefficients. We are going to decompose the inverse matrix, inverse matrix of the LNTF within direct and initial felt effects and indirect effects. For the direct and initial effects, we are going to use this, this echo inverted emissions coefficient and also wired coefficient for the rest of the sectors. And for the rest of the indirect effects, we are going to use the wired coefficients. So we think that this going, we are going to get a more accurate uh, results. And about the scenarios, we assume that capture the uncertainty is very important, so we are going to, to, to try to develop and to, to solve many different scenarios. Methodological scenarios, uh, construction period length scenarios, lifetime scenarios, load factor. An interesting one is the GHG, greenhouse gas emissions intensity of the Spanish economy. We are going to, to try to get getting closer to this uh, European Union objective of 90% of renewable energy, and going to, we are going to try to, to know if there is going to be a, a very big or not effect over the total emissions. And the rest of the scenarios is going to be, a, another one interesting is going is to, to, to try to change the world consumption patterns. Another scenario is about uranium prices, finance comparison, comparisons, and the last one is going to be an interval of, of emissions, five minutes. Okay. Uh, main results. Uh, the carbon footprint, I, I didn't say anything about that. We are going to consider the equivalent, car equivalent uh, carbon dioxide emissions from wild. Okay? And we're going to use a, a number of different gases. And the main conclusion is that the carbon footprint using a hybrid multi-regional input of volume is going to be 19, 19, oh, sorry, 19.7 grams of carbon dioxide uh, emissions. And it is very interesting to note that only 1.5 grams are going to be produced domestically. So they're going to be only producing within Spain. The rest are going to be foreign. So obviously to produce electricity with nuclear power is clean and is even more clean if you produce it in Spain because you transfer all the responsibility to the rest of the countries. And attending to the Kyoto Protocol responsibility criterion is very good because we are not are going to assume those emissions because they are going to be produced abroad. So maybe it's a problem. Maybe we should try to, to consider all those emissions. And as we can see, the fuel cycle phase or states are going to be the most pollutant phase. It's obviously, the mining of uranium is going to to pollute a lot. Uh, we can see in this map the dispersion of the, the emissions of our carbon footprint. As we can see, Briat, Brazil, Russia, India, and Australia are going to be the countries with the, the highest responsibility in this case. And you can see Spain is almost white, so we are clean, clean, clean. <laughs> Too much clean, maybe. <laughs> Um, about uh, the phases, it's interesting in this slide to analyze that uh, Briat, rest of the European Union and NAFTA are going, to, are going to be the most pollutant regions in this case because of the, they are going to produce the fuel cycle or they, are, they have the stages of production of fuel cycle, so because of, the, because of that is it is the result. And it is interesting to, to highlight China too, because uh, when you talk about uh, world, environment, and China, obviously always the conclusion is bad. In this case, it's also bad. Uh, it seems not to be so bad, it's only uh, in 11%, but as, as we can see, it is because we don't have any uh, stage of production on, in the phase uh, of new nuclear fuel cycle. So, but, but there are a lot of emissions embodied in the operation and maintenance and the construction phase. It is because China is one of our preferable uh, um, um, clients. So we, we have a, a very strong relation, trade relationship in, within Spain and China in the, last, in the last year. So in the future, if, if we increase this relationship, maybe uh, this tendency can, can change. And obviously, uh, China is a big, uh, is a carbonized dragon, like some papers say. <laughs> so obviously, we can we can increase these these results if we increase the trade relationships with China. 
As you can see, we have uh, developed too many uh, scenarios, and this is only a summary of all of them. It's impossible to, to comment on the results because we don't have time enough. Uh, I would like to highlight that uh, use a hybrid multi-regional imputable model is, is accurate to this case. If we don't use this hybrid model, we get a reduction in emissions of 32%. And if we use the, the single region uh, uh, assumption, if Spain da, uh, produce all the imports, the, the emissions would be uh, much lower, a 62% lower. Uh, compared to other technologies, obviously nuclear power is a uh, clean technology. Uh, it's more or less located between the uh, after the wind on uh, offshore hydro and solar thermal. So it's a clean technology, we can say that. And our results are really similar to the OECD, OECD uh, reports in the last years. Uh, I think I have to finish, uh, more or less. There are many ideas. One of them is very interesting. If, if, if there are a problem like Fukushima and there is a change in the, an unexpected change in the energy policy, like the problem that would have that was in, in, in Germany after Fukushima, because it was a shutdown of the nuclear energy uh, from one day to the other day. Uh, uh, it would be a, a kind of early decommissioning scenario, our C1 scenario, and emissions would be at 20% 20, 20 higher. So obviously we need some security in the energy policies during the operating years of the nuclear powers to, to get these, these good results in terms of emissions. Um, changes in the world consumption patterns are very important too. Uh, as I said at the beginning, as I said uh, in the last two or three slides, if we increase our trade relations, relationship with China, the emissions are going to, to, to increase uh, dramatically. And obviously, if we produce all the stages of production in the European Union, there's going to be always a reduction in the total emissions. This is a consequence of, the, of a cleaner uh, energy mix in the European Union, obviously. And I'm going to pass to the last scenario. We, uh, we have assumed uh, an interval, or we have estimated an interval of the best cases and the worst cases. And this interval is, going, is coming from nine grams of carbon dioxide if all the good results are compiled during the 60 years. And the worst scenario is going to be uh, uh, located in 83 grams of carbon dioxide. So this, is, this amount of emissions, I think it, we, sh we should consider it, it because it's, it's also cleaner, obviously, but it's maybe too close to another technologies like uh, the uh, combined cycle power plants that more or less have 400 grams of carbon dioxide. So maybe we should, we should consider the the advantages and disadvantages in this case. And it's possible, why not? Um, and that's all, because the conclusion is exactly the same things that I, I have commented now. So if we have time for questions, or maybe later.